Why would the U.S. government drop millions of flies over Panama? It sounds strange, but these flies are on the front lines of a battle against an enemy you've likely never heard of, a parasite that can ravage livestock and wildlife. But how can flies stop something so deadly? The answer takes us deep into the skies over Panama and into one of the most innovative scientific operations in the world. First, let's uncover the threat that triggered this mission, the dangerous screw worm. How can something as small as a worm bring down entire herds of animals? The New World screw worm is no ordinary pest. It's a biological nightmare. These parasitic flies lay their eggs in open wounds, and when the larvae hatch, they begin eating the animal alive. The agony is undescribable. Pets, cattle, even wildlife, no warm-blooded creature is safe. And without prevention, Panama's livestock industry would be decimated, leaving countless families without their livelihoods and threatening the country's fragile ecosystem. But how do you stop something as small and relentless as a worm? The answer, by going airborne. Stopping a deadly parasite like the screw worm, that's where a fleet of specially equipped planes comes into play. Let's explore exactly how this unique operation unfolds above Panama, with a closer look at the specifications that make these aircraft perfect for the job. Let's step inside the King Air A90. It's powered by two Pratt & Whitney PT6A135 engines, each delivering 750 horsepower. These engines give the plane the speed and reliability it needs, cruising at 270 miles per hour with a range of over 1,200 miles. That means it can cover vast areas without needing to refuel. Lined up inside the plane are rows of chilled containers holding millions of sterile flies. The cool temperature keeps them dormant during the flight, preventing them from waking up too soon. The King Air A90 flies low, between 1,500 and 8,500 feet. For comparison, a commercial airplane flies at 30,000 feet. The King Air's low altitude is perfect for ensuring the flies are released accurately but high enough to stay clear of any wildlife. The aircraft is also equipped with advanced GPS and satellite navigation systems, which allow for precise monitoring of the flight path. What exactly is the flight path, you may be wondering? Well, let's take a look at the map. This is Panama. The sterile screwworm flies are dropped primarily over this part here, called the Darien Gap, a rugged and densely forested region located along the border between Panama and Colombia. The flies are released regularly along this border, with specific drop zones including areas in Garishin here, Sambu right here, and Yavisa over here. This allows for maximum coverage, ensuring that there is no opening for any screw worms to slip through, or that would be years of work that will need to be redone. As time goes on and technology improves, the ability to keep those openings closed will also improve. While still a bit experimental, AI-powered systems are increasingly being used to enhance flight operations as it allows for real-time adjustments to flight routes based on shifting environmental conditions. These AI systems integrate data from real-time atmospheric sensors and GPS, automatically rerouting the plane if necessary to ensure optimal coverage of the target area. These systems are constantly fed data from sensors that measure wind conditions and other environmental factors, enabling pilots to make minute adjustments as necessary. If conditions change mid-flight, the pilot can reroute, ensuring that the flies are still dropped over the most vulnerable areas. So this is theoretically how it's done, but what does it actually look like in practice? Let's start inside. The previously mentioned containers holding the flies are rigged with a dispersal system, and when the plane reaches its target area, that dispersal system opens the containers in precise timed intervals. There's no dramatic hatch where a million flies come pouring out like you'd expect to see in a movie. Instead, there are two small chutes on the bottom of the fuselage, gently releasing the flies into the warm tropical air. 
The flies, previously in a deep sleep, slowly begin to stir and wake up as they descend. They will then spread out across the landscape below. Rinse and repeat for each location several times a week. So, I'm sure the logistics of it seem to make sense, but this doesn't actually answer why sterile flies in the first place. Perhaps the US government just enjoys watching screw worms versus screw worms duking it out on the battlefield. Well, I can't definitively say that isn't a reason. In reality, there is something that actually makes the flies they're dropping special. And it all began with a pretty miraculous scientific breakthrough. Let's step back into the lab for a moment. This is where it all begins, where the flies are prepped for their mission. Back in the early days of fly production, a facility in Mission, Texas was built to produce an astounding 20 million sterile flies per week. These flies, part of the blowfly family, feed on living flesh. As you can probably imagine, this made mass feeding them a bit of a challenge. At first, the larvae were fed a mix of warm ground beef and blood, but cost quickly became an issue. So, scientists tried cheaper alternatives like horse, whale, pork, cow lung, and even nutria, a rodent that was invading Louisiana at the time. By 1962, the facility was burning through 108 tons of meat weekly. This was all just to produce them. This doesn't even mention actually needing to transport them to Panama. To start, they smelled so foul that airlines were just refusing to carry them, forcing workers to spray the fly boxes with cologne just to get them shipped. The mission plant eventually shut down in 1981, and production was moved to Mexico, and then later to Panama, where the flies are now produced on an old sugarcane plantation. Thankfully, they're no longer fed raw meat. Today, their diet consists of powdered blood, milk, and eggs thickened with cellulose, which may not look pretty, but it does the trick for the flies. Now that the production of the flies is all sorted out, what are they doing with them in the facility? Inside, scientists are working with an innovation called the sterile insect technique. The concept is simple, but the impact is game-changing. Here's how it works. Screwworm females only mate once in their lifetime. Once they've mated, they won't reproduce again. So the goal is to flood the environment with sterile males, males that can still attract females but whose offspring will never hatch. This biological strategy is designed to disrupt the natural reproductive cycle of screwworms, gradually shrinking their population. Now, take a look at the process. These flies are exposed to cobalt-60 radiation, a process that sterilizes the males without affecting their ability to mate. This is a delicate process. Too much radiation and the flies wouldn't survive. Too little and they could still reproduce. This precision ensures the males can still do their job, but the next generation of screw worms is stopped before it starts. But how does this process scale up to the point where millions of flies are dropped each day? Once the flies are sterilized, they're transported to airfields and loaded into planes. Each flight can carry as many as 100 million sterile flies, enough to cover vast areas of land and keep the screwworm population under control. But why Panama? Of all places, why is this tiny country the key to preventing an ecological catastrophe? Despite its size, Panama is more than just a dot on the map. Panama sits at the narrowest point of Central America, a natural bottleneck between two continents. By containing the screwworms here, the operation prevents them from spreading northward, where they could devastate livestock industries in neighboring countries. The economic stakes are huge. Panama's agriculture industry depends heavily on livestock. Any outbreak of screwworms would lead to massive financial losses. Over $350 million has been invested in this program, saving over $2.5 billion in potential livestock losses. But this is not just about saving money. Thousands of farmers rely on their livestock for their livelihood. If the operation were to fail, it wouldn't just mean lost animals, it would mean lost jobs, 
collapsing industries, and widespread hardship. That's why Panama is the key to this entire mission. The fight against screwworms is ongoing. The planes, the steroflies, and the ground teams all work together to protect Panama, Central America, and beyond. It's a mission that requires constant vigilance because even the smallest gap could lead to disaster. But with the precision of airdrops and the ingenuity of the sterile insect technique, this operation shows how a small intervention can have a massive impact. The skies above Panama are not just a battlefield. They're a line of defense that keeps this dangerous parasite at bay. Bye for now.